sling and shot. Goliath wasn't so big after all. Stand up, stand up. You don't have to be afraid. He will give you courage. He will give you strength. Put your faith in God, and I promise if you do, He will make a Bible story out of you. Hey, hey. God bless you this morning, my friends. The Lord is good. Hey, I'm your host, Evangelist Eddie Cheney, and we'd like to welcome you in to Bible Study 101. Amen. We're going to be in the book of Ephesians, so you want to definitely get your Bible, have your notebook and uh, pencil sharp, ready to take notes, and please pray and pray for us as we pray for you allowing God to write his word upon the tablet of our heart this morning. Amen. That we may go forth and apply that word, being doers of the word of God. Not hearers only, my friend, but doers of the word of God. Remember, we're on every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, and we'd like to invite you to participate in our live call-in Bible study. Yes, you can call in live during the program, uh, view your, you know, your comments, uh, share what the Lord's uh, gave t- unto you through the Word. Uh, hey, even share a testimony live, uh, a prayer request. Just simply obey the Lord. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, anytime that we are on the air live, you can dial 1-931-484-4531 and participate during the live program. Now remember, if we are off of the air, there is a number that you can call and leave your pre-recorded testimonies, comments about the program, Bible questions, uh, prayer request, or just shout howdy. We'd love to hear from you. You can dial 1-931-229-0768 and leave your pre-recorded message. We'd love to hear from you, neighbors. And once again, I'm your host, Evangelist Eddie Cheney. We want to welcome you in to Bible study. 101. We are going to be in the book of Ephesians. We're going to be breaking in, uh, amen, right there in uh, chapter 6, verse 10, because we are still teaching on the whole armor of God. So you want to gather up your Bible, your notepad, your pencil, make sure it's good and sharp. 
get you a cup of coffee, and we're going to be talking about the breastplate of righteousness. Amen? So get ready. We'll be right back. Enjoy this next song. Amen? Because, well, simply, let's just raise our hands up and just worship the Lord because uh, he is truly worthy. Amen? So I'm excited today, church. I pray that you are as well, my friend. It is a glorious day. It is a day of the Lord. Let's, well, let's get dressed as we go out into battle. Yes, my friend, there is a war going on, and there's a soul hanging in the balance. So we must get dressed. Amen? And know that no matter what the world may say, what they do to us, it's not going to matter. Because in the end, if you hold on, yes, hold on to that unchanging hand of the great I am, guess what? You'll still be standing. We'll be right back right here on Bible Study 101, my friends. Be blessed. Since I made my decision to follow him and turn my life around. But he's been faithful to help me when I struggle and always picks me up when I'm down. Judging from the failures in my past But His faithfulness has proved There's no way that I can lose This time I got something that's gonna last I'm still standing Just like I said I would The weather said I couldn't his word said I could And though my mind grow weary In the battle that I face I'm still standing I'm still standing Because of His amazing grace The devil often tempts me As I go from day to day I'm determined I won't turn around No matter what it brings my way And there were times he knocked me down But I landed on my knees And that's where I grew stronger And claimed another victory I'm still standing Just like I said I would The weather said I couldn't his word said I could And though my mind grow weary In the battle that I face I'm still standing I'm still standing Because of His amazing grace I stood through the fire And I stood through the flood And the reason I'm still standing Is because Just continue to hold on to that unchanging hand. Amen. God is good, my friends. And once you've took a hold of the plow, don't look back. Because if you do, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. We're going to jump right into the study now, if you would. Uh, we give you time to get your Bibles out. We're going to be in the book of Ephesians, 
chapter 6, and we're going to break in at verse 10 because we're still teaching on, well, putting on the whole armor of God. And, uh, you know, it's uh, amazing that um, the second part mentioned, I mean, you know, the second piece of armor that Paul mentions in Ephesians chapter 6, look at verse 14, is the breastplate of righteousness. Now think about this. Why is this breastplate important? You know, for it was for the ancient uh, soldiers, and it is for us. We're going to take a lesson from the ancient uh, Israel. You know, they provided us an ironic example of just how important armor can be. Perhaps you recall the, the well, the cowardly life of King Ahab. You know, but, you know how how he did uh, this. You know about how the evil king uh, life comes to an end. You know, maybe some of you have read in the book of Kings. Uh, I believe it's chapter 21. We're going to listen to it. as So if you want to go over there, uh, First Kings, amen, you want to jump over there, uh, chapter 21, because, uh, well, it goes along with uh, how important this breastplate really is. So go ahead and turn over there right now, and you can follow along as we listen. We'll probably listen to uh, 21 and 22. That's 1 Kings chapter 21, and we'll probably listen to chapter 22 also. And you can put it together, and then we're going to jump back into the study. I mean, uh, you know, when God prophesies, hey, he means what he says and says what he means. So pay attention. It's important that we allow God to write his word upon the tablet of our heart, my friend, that we may go forth into this world. Knowing who we are, called and ordained by God, we must put on the whole armor of God. And today we're going to be talking about, well, the breastplate, the second piece of armor that Paul mentions. We're right there in Ephesians chapter 6, verse, you know, we're going to start in verse 10, and you can read, but right now, if you would, go to, First Kings, as we listen and hopefully learn how important this breastplate we'll be talking about, the whole armor of God, is, my friend. Be blessed. First Kings 21. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed, and turned away his face, and would eat no bread. But Jezebel his wife came to him, and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise, and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders, and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out, and stone him, that he may die. 